In part one of lecture three, we will look at bitmap graphics as well as its uses. Almost since the beginning of desktop computers, users have been interested in using them to display images on the screen as well as on the printed page. Over the past several decades, two types of computer graphics have developed, bitmap graphics and vector graphics. We will concentrate in this video on bitmap graphics and we will discuss vector graphics in part two of this lecture. A bitmap graphic views the screen as a grid of very small rectangular cells. Each of these cells is a picture element, commonly known as a pixel. Each pixel, in turn, is assigned a color. Back in the days of monochrome monitors, you might need only one bit to indicate if the pixel was black or white, or bright green or dark green, but that is not typically the case anymore. We will need several pixels to convey the exact color that we want. If you use a byte to represent a pixel, that will give us a choice of one of up to 256 different colors. Right now you are looking at a picture of Stonehenge, the remains of a prehistoric stone structure in Wiltshire, England. The circled portion of the picture shows the upper left portion of one of the stone arches. In the lower right, you can see that corner magnified many times to show the different color that each pixel represents. The encircled pixel is gray and the binary or base 2 number that we use to represent it is 1010101010100101010101010110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110
scanners, and graphic software will offer the user a choice of different bitmapped formats. These include Bump, RAW, TIFF, JPEG, and PUNG. In bitmap graphics, there are two main elements in representing our picture, color and resolution. Color monitors typically represent color by indicating how much red, green, and blue it has. We use 8 bits each to represent the amount of these three colors. In the example on the bottom left, we have a value of 255 for each of the three colors. Full value of red, green, and blue, which indicates that the color we have is white. On the bottom right, we have 238 of both blue and red, but only 130 of green. In these proportions, what we will get is violet. All we need are these three prime colors. All the colors that we wish to see can be produced from the proper proportions of these three. Again, the colors are represented in memory by three 8-bit numbers representing red, green, and blue. 8 bits each for three colors means that we need a 24-bit number to represent the colors that appear in the image. These numbers can be specified in base 10 or decimal, base 16 or hexadecimal, or in base 2, which is binary. The number of colors that are available to us is called the color depth. The overall dimensions of the grid define what the image resolution will be. To have high resolution images you need a very large number of very small cells. But it also means you need to store much more data than if the resolution were lower. This is the trade-off that you have to deal with when deciding how high you want your resolution to be. The higher the resolution, the larger the graphics file. The smaller the graphics file, the lower the resolution. When you have a graphics file with a certain resolution, the big question is usually, how much can I enlarge it? A quick look at the image size window on the lower right will give you exactly what you need to know. The limit of enlargement depends entirely on how many pixels per inch you have. Laser quality images will have a resolution of 600 pixels per inch. Anything more than 600 pixels per inch is photographic quality. 300 pixels per inch is usually the lower limit of acceptable resolution. In this window you will see that the resolution is 150 pixels per inch. This would be considered draft resolution, which is only good enough for proofreading a text or a cursory examination of a picture. The advantage of using Adobe Photoshop or another graphics program is that it allows you to quantify the quality of the image. Data compression is all about saving a file with fewer bytes than you would normally need. Image compression is just one more example of this. When we do image compression, we are recoding the images in a manner that allows us to save it using fewer bytes. Run length encoding is a lossless compression scheme. If you have a series of pixels with the same color next to each other, we save the number of times that the color appears and the code for that color. For example, you have white, 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 blue, blue. You would save it as four white, two blue. This may not seem like it's saving any bytes, but if you have 30 white pixels in a row, the savings is significant. Lossy compression assumes that we are willing to lose some degree of detail in our picture. In the example you see here, the picture on the left is going to be compressed into the picture on the right. With storage savings, 
of 35%. Some of the details are less sharp, but the differences are minimal. Photoshop does a lot more than simply tell you how large you can make a picture. It allows you to make many changes to the image. The photo editing software includes sophisticated tools that are based on various graphics algorithms. Noise in a picture refers to spots, dust, and other defects in the image. Noise reduction involves removing or minimizing these defects. You can make pictures much brighter, more sharply focused, and add color to the picture. You can change the color of the picture. This would include adding color to pictures that are originally black and white. If an image is distorted, it can be reconstructed to correct its perspective. Sometimes there will be a set of pixels whose pattern may appear in more than one part of a picture. For example, there may be wallpaper in the background. You can copy those pixels and paste that copy in another part of the wall where the wallpaper may have been damaged. Inpainting involves the restoration of a photograph and is the digital equivalent of painting over defects in a picture to produce something closer to how the picture looked originally. Digital compositing involves creating one image out of several others.